If I double click task A, I go to the advanced tab. I want you to notice that the default constraint on every task, unless you say so otherwise, is as soon as possible. That's Microsoft Project's guarantee that every task will finish as soon as it possibly can. I'm going to leave the default constraint type set on task A. Now let's go to task B. On this task, I go to the Advanced tab. And let me show you what as late as possible does. This is a mind blower, my friends. If I click OK, kaboom, look, this task is now pushed to start as, or to finish as late as it possibly can in the project. It will finish as late as the latest finishing task in the entire project. Now here's the killer. I want you to notice on both task A and task B, there's no indicators in the indicators column. So folks, beware of that one. All right, let's continue on. Let's go to task C. On task C, I'd like to set a start no earlier than constraint. And on this, I want the constraint date to be September the 15th. Um, just for the purposes of speeding things along, I want to let you know I won't be putting notes on these tasks. But the best practice is when you do it in the real world, remember, put a constraint note on any task that you add a constraint to. Now, this is start no earlier than September 15th. I click OK. Hey, look what just happened. It pushed the start date of that task out to September 15th. Also, if we look in the indicators column, we can see there is an indicator. You remember I said it has a blue dot? It's kind of hard to tell. You really need to get your reading glasses out. But there is a little light blue dot in that indicator symbol. Start no earlier than constraint. That's the indicator for it. Now let's go to task D. On this task, I want to set a finish no earlier than constraint. Finish no earlier than. And the date on this, I want to be September the 26th, Friday the 26th. Now, you don't see anything happen there. But I want you to notice that the indicator, again, these are flexible constraints. So they have the little blue dot in the indicator. What I now want you to see is the behavior or effect on task D with this constraint set. Watch this, kids. If I change the duration of task C to only three days, look, task D is not pulled backwards so that it starts right after task C finishes. This is because we have a finish no earlier than constraint. It cannot finish any earlier than September the 26th. So there's the effect of the constraint. You get to see it with your own eyes. So those are the four flexible constraints. Now let's look at the four inflexible constraints. Let's go to task E. And I want to set a finish no later than. Finish no later than. And the date on this will be October. October the 3rd, Friday, October the 3rd. When you set an inflexible constraint on any task that has one or more predecessors linked to it, you will always see this planning wizard message asking you, are you sure you want to do this? Don't you know this could cause you scheduling problems now or in the future? It raises a big stink about it. Okay, So here's what I want to let you know. I do fully intend to do this. Yes, I know the consequences. The correct choice in this dialog is to click Continue and let it set the constraint. So let's choose Continue, and I'll click OK. Now, the constraint that I have 
I want you to notice, finish no later than, look at the indicator in the indicator's column. See the red dot. This is the constraint that I call the invisible brick wall. Just to the right of task E out here is an invisible brick wall. You can't see it, but it's going to block task E from going any later than uh, October the 3rd. Let me make sure I did that right. Yep, there it is. It won't, cannot go any later than October 3rd, which is Friday. Now let me show you the impact. If I change the duration of task D to 10 days, whoa, whenever you miss an inflexible constraint date, Microsoft Project will always display a planning wizard message giving you the bad news. It describes the bad news as creating a scheduling conflict. The real way to interpret this dialogue is, my friend, you ain't going to make that constraint date. It's not going to happen. So when you see this dialogue, the correct response is to click Continue and then click OK. Now this is what I wanted to show you. Task E cannot move. There's an invisible brick wall right here called the finish no later than constraint. The task can't move, but look, what it causes here is this wrap back effect. Now whenever you see that wrap back effect, that's a bad thing. And in fact, when you see that error dialog, that planning wizard dialog, that means you as the project manager now need to step in and do something about the situation. Something needs to be done to rectify the schedule problems. OK. Um, the other thing, just as an aside, I also want you to know, uh, for those of you who are the purists or the advanced users of Microsoft Project, when you have this kind of wrap back effect, due to a missed constraint that also generates negative total slack. Negative total slack. OK, let's continue on. Task F, I'm not going to do anything with, but I'll come back to it in a moment. Let's go to task G. On task G, we need a start no later than constraint. Start no later than. And the date on this is October the 13th. So let's put this in, October the 13th. Again, as I told you, because it's an inflexible constraint being applied to a task with at least one predecessor, you'll always see the planning wizard dialog. So again, you want to click continue and then click OK. Now, we don't see anything happening on the task. That's OK. Now watch this, kids. If I change the duration of task F to eight days, there's the warning again. Again, remember this warning means, my friend, you ain't going to make that constraint date. The correct answer is to click Continue and then click OK. And again, I want you to notice on the task uh, G, because we have a start no later than constraint. It does not allow this task to move. Again, there's the wrap back effect. Again, it also generates negative total slack as well. OK, now let's continue on. Let's go to the task milestone one. And why don't we put a must start on constraint? Must start on. And we'll make the date of this October the 20th. All right, yeah, October 20th, that's Monday. We'll click OK. Again, no surprise here. We'll click OK. And bingo, it does move the milestone now to start on October 20th. No surprises. All right, let's test it again. Notice the indicator in the indicators column. There's that red dot. It's an inflexible constraint. So what happens if I change the duration of task G to eight days? Well, folks, there it is again. As expected, 
scheduling conflict, you ain't going to make the date, we'll click continue and click OK. And again, look at that wrap back. The must start on constraint actually glues the milestone symbol on the Gantt chart on that date so it cannot move. And again, for our advanced users or purists, do know this generates negative total slack. OK, now task H we won't touch, but let's go to milestone 2. And let's set the final type of inflexible constraint. This is a must finish on, must finish on. And the constraint date on this, I want to be October the 27th, must finish on October the 27th. As expected, there's the planning wizard. We'll click continue. There we go. That pushes it out to that date. So now it has to finish on October the 27th. And our final test, you could probably see this coming. What happens if I change the duration of its predecessor, task H, to eight days? There we are again. We get the planning wizard message, scheduling conflict. You ain't going to make that constraint date. You click continue, click OK. And again, kids, there it is. See the wrap back? Again, this task cannot move. I refer to the must start on and must finish on constraints as glue. They actually super glue the Gantt bar onto the Gantt chart so they cannot move. OK, now that's the first part of our demo. But I want you to notice this, and this is something of a little interest here. Notice task B has now slipped even further in the schedule. It has slipped all the way out to the finish date of the entire project. Why is this again? It has an as late as possible constraint on it. So as the project advances, this Gantt bar would continue moving to the right. I'll guarantee you it would drive you nuts to try to figure out what is going on. OK, so a brief summary of what we have seen so far. Constraints are date limitations that can limit Microsoft project scheduling engines somewhat if it's a flexible constraint, and a whole bunch if it's an inflexible constraint.